I wonder if Andrew's going to get in at exactly 12 o'clock with Gavin. <laughs> well, that should be... I mean, they're always a little early on that, so it'll be in 12 seconds, but it'll be a little sooner. Let's see. 10, Probably eight, 9, eight seconds then. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, wow. Well, uh, okay. Uh, do you want to just start or <laughs> are we being pranked right now <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> I don't <laughs> what's well, going on the blind side we can't we can't do a blind side we I need know. an are episode you, we need the episode <laughs> is this a, andrew are you there sorry yeah i got a call um i was gonna jump in when gavin jumped in to try to like that's really what we sync thought us. that's what uh, we thought yeah. Uh, yeah. But he's not here. FedEx called. I don't uh -oh. know where Gavin. He's eating some avocado toast. Last I heard. Oh, boy. L look who's barely on time. <laughs> oh, fuck. You are on time. My mic wasn't working. Yeah, it's within a minute, right? So does that count? Or Yeah. Yeah, you're on time. What, oh, what did you need the extra 48 seconds for today? I was rebooting. Oh, ah, classic fucking, reboot. Sweating? I was sweating it. Yeah. That's and I wanted to do a little gag where I would join two seconds later so Eric could count to 60 and I just blew it. <laughs> I, I mean, we were, we were counting because we assumed that Andrew was going to join at the same time you did. And I figured you, it, you were going to like wait the two seconds and be exactly on time. <laughs> and then neither of you did that. So we just kind of <laughs> sat here and went, well, is this a prank? <laughs> I got a call from FedEx and we got chips in the mail. So I just I had to make sure. I had to make sure everything was okay. I can't imagine that was them that fast. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what okay. the package is, okay. but I hope it is. Uh, what an what an odd uh, begin. What an odd energy to begin this episode with. Oh, I feel great. Uh, I hello, feel great. your energy <laughs> off. Hello, it was just you weren't you weren't on the on the odd side when we were all there wait wondering where Gavin and Andrew were at the same time <laughs> and what part of the bit we were in right now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, hello and welcome to another episode of the. Face podcast. My name is Jeff Ramsey. With me, as always, Andrew Payton and Gavin Free decided to go nicknameless today and just go with the OG names, uh, the ones that God and our parents gave us, and uh, and then also for me, I guess a a, a judge because I changed my name. Uh, this is episode one hundred and sixty <laughs> of Volume Two, Wait, uh, season ninety eight. He didn't choose it though. No, but he get it out like the judge just decided. Well, first off, it was a she. Uh, she allowed me to have the name, though. I had to go to her and say, may I please have this name? And then she said, yes. Oh. So she granted me the name. I much, see. Yeah. I thought you were saying your new nickname is The Judge. I was very confused. Has God named anyone? Huh. Uh, didn't he? If I mean, only he there Earth. was a painting about it. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't see. That part wasn't covered in, in a fresco, <laughs> so I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't uh, you're still T-Bone, right? T-Bone still? Like, it's there? I know you're not yeah, using man, it right I'm still, now. Okay. I'm still T-Bone. I just didn't feel like it. It just didn't, didn't feel like a nickname episode. You got to keep the audience guessing. You got to mix true. it up. Got to keep you guys guessing, you know? Andrew tried to get us back in sync uh, before this started. He suggested a quick game of Halo right before we started. <laughs> did, did you guys play? No, because I was having breakfast, trying to stuff some <laughs> breakfast down. So we opted for a little game of Hangman. We both don't oh. know how to play hangman is what, what do you uh, mean? was quickly established. <laughs> I think you're supposed to do a perimeter first. I don't think you're supposed to go straight to the body. No, I was drawing the frame. Oh, I thought that was I thought that was my body. I thought I was already Okay, never mind. No, I, was I just, just misinterpreted. Doing it. Yeah. I immediately thought it was Wordle is how I, I played it. <laughs> Gavin laid out the blank spots and I said shrimp. And then there was confusion. <laughs> but we got there. <laughs> so who won hangman? Uh, I, he guessed it right. It was it was crisps. I you know I don't even view Hangman as a winner. Or I feel like it's a collaborative effort. I feel like you either win no, or lose get, together. If you get your body drawn hanging by the neck, you've lost. I think. Yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> really I I, I don't know. I view that as our body. I don't view it. I feel like you want me to win. <laughs> do you, do you, hey, Gav. Our body. But I'm hanging us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gav. You do were. You remember. <laughs> Gavin, do you remember when we used to work at Achievement Hunter and yeah. we did uh, we did uh, those hardcore shows like Hardcore Monopoly mm -hmm. where we played Monopoly with real money? 
Do you think anybody's ever played hardcore hangman <laughs> where it's just two, oh no. two dudes in nooses? <laughs> yeah. Well, according to Andrew, it'll be a tandem noose. We would just both be through it. Yeah. <laughs> to save money, I guess. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It was really fucked up that you did that to us, but I'm glad that, you know, I was able to figure out the word and we're okay. Do you think that would be one loop and both of our heads are through it, or would it be like one rope with two loops? I think one rope, two loops, for okay. sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that exists. First of all, you think my head is going to fit through a loop with your head? There's no way. My head needs its own loop. <laughs> oh, It needs a separate attachment. Oh, I, I think I've got a better chance of surviving if I get hanged with you. Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Hmm. Why do you think that? What, I don't know. I just feel like the physics of it probably wouldn't work out yeah. for the rope. Uh, so you think you'd live? <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> Although I think there's a lot to it. You've got to get the weight right when it comes to hanging people and the distance. Because I think uh, it's, it's technically considered not very humane if, you, if uh, your head comes off. I think it's technically considered not very humane. Yeah. Well. If the rope breaks, do they have to let you go? <laughs> Isn't that like a three strikes rule where if it fails three times, it's like ah, you were you were destined for the for the future. You think there's a, you you think think there's a, <laughs> a three strikes rule with hanging? Yeah, I think so. Like, all right, oh shit, man, the rope broke. Let's try it. Let's try it one more time. But you better be sure. Oh, it broke again. This is uh, the last chance we have to fucking kill this guy. <laughs> it's like you get to a firing squad and the gun jams, and they're like, oh, I guess you can go home. <laughs> Oh. They only brought one bullet. I think if the if the rope is too long and you just land on the ground, you should be able to walk away. <laughs> we Could got a new be... hangman. So let me let me posit this. What if it is two okay. nooses on either side of one rope? What's the so, plural of noose? No noose I? Noose? <laughs> Niece, niece. <laughs> like, niece. what if? I guess it would be kind of like this, and yeah. then you just sort of like, oh, you know oh it's like I a mean? tug of war. war. Yeah, yeah, that looks little, fun. <laughs> okay, so what if? Yeah, what if it's at ground level and you just have to run in opposite directions, and whoever dies first loses? <laughs> I don't. You, you think it would like tighten as you you ran the other way? Like, it would tighten on? The Absolutely, other it would tighten. <laughs> I don't know how you would tighten the other person's without tightening yours. <laughs> That's yeah, the that's thing. The it, it's like a. That's the thing. The tougher dude wins, I guess. The tougher neck wins. Is that who you want to live? Tough neck. Yeah, you want tough neck. <laughs> yeah, this just sounds like hardcore tug of war, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. <laughs> so stupid. I mean, I mean, what's gonna happen there if the rope's long? Two people are gonna go full tilt in either direction, and both people's necks will break. <laughs> How long is the rope? Is it hundreds of yards of rope? Is it just the if longest it was rope? Like, <laughs> it takes it was forever. Like a, a hundred meters of rope. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> that'd be the most terrifying sprint of your of your life. There's something really funny about the idea of like a summer intern executioner constantly fucking things up, not tying the knots right, ordering too long of rope. Uh. <laughs> what would your strategy be if you had a hundred yards of rope attached to, to your neck and then somebody else's neck on the other end? I'd just be chasing the other person, I think. Just try to stay up with them? <laughs> yeah, the slack. just try to keep the slack there <laughs> and eventually I, try and catch up to them and maybe hook a bit of slack around their neck and just hang them manually? I think I would run to a stop sign and then I would wind myself around the stop sign to, <laughs> to protect myself. <laughs> And then hope they don't notice and see if they just accidentally hang themselves trying to pull, trying to pull. So them. from from like a driver's bystander perspective, they're like stopping at the stop sign. They see someone running <laughs> with a rope around the neck, running around <laughs> the stop sign, like a, like a t human tether ball. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then suddenly the rope goes taut, and then they go flying and pull out the stop sign. That's probably what they're gonna see. <laughs> How hard is this person pulling? They're gonna pull a stop sign out of the ground. That shit's in there with concrete. You don't know what the other person's done. He might have gone and <laughs> <laughs> picked up a couple of dumbbells and jumped out of a window. You don't know what he's done. <laughs> you think dumbbells would do it? <laughs> oh, what if you like hopped on somebody's car, like the hood of their car? Yeah, what, what if you go? hop on a city bus? <laughs> It's almost like it's the same idea of like pulling your tooth out by like tying like a rope around yeah. it, but it's just it's escalated <laughs> to the highest level. But you're pulling someone's neck out. I, 
I feel like if it was you and I, Gavin, I would just, we would, I'd have to, that's how our life now. That's just how we live. We would I just would be a hundred yards away from every slow-mo <laughs> shoot <laughs> in the woods somewhere. How long, how long do you think, like, let's say we did this as an experiment. How long do you think you guys could peacefully coexist before one of you accidentally kills the other? Uh, I think until the first night of sleep. And then Andrew would have a dream about trials and lurch upright and hang me. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, no. You'd be fine because you could tuck him in finally. Oh, and then, then he wouldn't could, be able to go you anywhere. Could, well, you could walk over. You'd watch over him like you want to do. Or maybe he could be in the bath and I could be in the bed and it would just be pretty No, I don't want to be in the bath. Okay. I want to be in the bed. Stop going in there then. Get tucked in. Well, I, I feel like I, I poorly explained. I was in the bath sleeping because it's literally the only place I could sleep with my lunks. I couldn't, there was nowhere else that <laughs> I could sit sentence. up right. Like, it was like, it was like a means to an end for you. Like, yeah, yeah it, it was, wasn't, I wasn't, I've never chosen the bath as my preferred destination for sleeping. It was just literally the only place I could get sleep. I mean, for someone who sleeps in the bath as much as you, that's a crazy sentence. But I don't, I don't, it's not a regular occurrence. Sometimes mm. I, I, not on purpose. Sometimes, you know, you just, it happens. That's never the goal. Is that audio recording content that you sent me? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> my lungs? Are we talking about <laughs> my lungs? It was fucking yeah. brutal, dude. <laughs> Gavin played it for me. Oh, yeah. I don't... I, like, look, I'm all for putting everything out that people want to hear and everything, and this is just going to create a fervor for people that want to hear. I don't think anybody should hear that. <laughs> like, I really, truly don't think... Like, I've thought about it many times since I heard it, and it has made me go, I wish I never heard that. Were you and awake I, or I don't think, uh, asleep? I was, what do you mean, when that was recorded? Yeah. I was awake. I recorded it. Okay. That's just me trying to exhale. Dude, my lungs sounded like Chernobyl, like with the radiation counter, like the, the, it sounded how like, crackly it was. It sounded like Zoltar changing a tire. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I would <laughs> equate it to, if, we, if we're not going to play it, that's what it sounded like. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Zoltar changing a tire is such a great visual. <laughs> so how are the lungs? Uh, not, I mean, better, getting better. Not as bad as they were. You're in the bed now, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I am. Okay. Okay, good. For the most part. For the most part. Does that mean you're still sleeping in the bathtub sometimes? Uh, if I really need to, yeah, but mostly I've been able to, like, I'm kind of on the end of it now. It sucks. I got, like pneumonia or like bronchitis on the tail end of having COVID. So it was, I was feeling better. And then honestly, it may have been your fault, Gavin. I was trying to track like what happened and you killed me with the cheese roll question. And I wondered if laughing that hard somehow <laughs> opened myself up. And I feel better. It just gave you tuberculosis or something. Yeah, exactly. It was a consumption laugh. It was. But uh, we're improving. Oh. I'm glad because I was because yeah. that, that audio clip was awful. Oh, yeah. it was not good. Imagine just yeah. that's your life. That's just us living that that we're not putting in decidedly. No, nah, I, I think it's not funny. No, it's not funny. <laughs> I never even considered his content. I thought that was a weird yeah. question. This is a funny podcast. That's not funny. That's the goal. I mean, you said that we open with suicide. <laughs> that's how we started. <laughs> well, being hanged isn't suicide. Well, <laughs> it, it, it very often is. Yeah. <laughs> Right, but going, the, going up to the gallows is not usually how people do it, I don't think. Right. No, but I viewed it as you putting us in that situation with Hangman. You put us okay. into the high stakes of solving sure. the word. I just think, I don't think, it, yeah, all right. Can we talk about something else that's terrible that isn't related to us? Give you a quick pivot. I've been doing some research. I'm not okay. done with my research, but we, uh, we got blindsided by you, Jeff, and we yeah. watched a yeah. episode of... Mr. Belvedere, in which Danny gets AIDS and uh, has to deal with that. Well, he doesn't get AIDS in the episode. He already has it when the episode starts. He gets diagnosed with AIDS yeah. in, within the episode. Or at least we, we as the viewer learn about his diagnosis. We're introduced to his diagnosis yes. in the episode. So I was curious, as looking at that person's IMDb, and I wondered if that is the worst thing that has happened to them as a character. Because their career... <laughs> is generally one-off episodes of sitcoms from that time. So I've been going through and I've been watching every appearance they have made in order. Um, I'm still, I'm only about halfway through 
Let me tell you, let me. They started in chips. That's the first role they ever had was in chips. Okay. They played a small child, I believe, was the role. You don't even see their face. The only thing that happens to them is they get run over by a bicycle in a park <laughs> uh, by a thief <laughs> trying to escape. So that's how they started. And they're ballooned. They let go of their balloon and they cry. They're like, dang, the balloon! <laughs> Is, so is the this guy the, the Sean Bean of kid actors? Yeah, this is the, like he's like the Star Trek red shirt of sitcoms. <laughs> yeah, so that was how, how they opened. Uh, the next thing I watched was Cagney and Lacey. They had an episode okay. in. Fucking uh, love Cagney th- and thankfully, Lacey. Thankfully, nothing bad happened to them. However, they did witness their friend get abducted. Uh, they, they, they were a key witness in an abduction of their friend. Uh, next thing I watched was Alice. I don't really know what happened in Alice because I can only find an Italian version of the episode <laughs> online, uh, and I had to use YouTube Translate. Something about tortoises. I think everything was okay. I think he was just like living in the building, having a good time talking about oh. turtles. How did you not blindside us with the Italian version of Alice? <laughs> We're not allowed to do a blindside, apparently. How the fuck is Alice subtitled into Italian? Why did it, why did Italy no. ever want that? It was, yeah, I don't know. It was, uh, it was or all dubbed. in. Is it dubbed? Yeah, it was a dubbed Italian version of it, <laughs> and I had to watch YouTube generated subtitles, which oh. I do not fully trust. They yeah. kept talking about tortoises randomly. Mm-hmm. Um, then uh, they were in a, a V. They're an episode of V. I wasn't able. I haven't watched that yet, but I, I ended it with silver spoons. I guarantee you, the V episode probably didn't go well for the kid. If you know that show at all, it's about lizard aliens that want to eat us. Yeah, oh. um, so I need to see that because I assume something terrible happened. But they were all also on Silver Spoons. Once again, they're kind of a Dennis the Menace type character in that one. They're having a good time. Everything's fun and all good. But uh, they witnessed another child abduction. They are oh, uh, God. They're with another group of kids that uh, one of them is abducted. So not great. Is that everything? They, that, is that like their entire body of work? No, they're, I'm about halfway through. They have a few like they have a four episode run in General Hospital. Uh, there's probably oh, like God. five Dude. or six other appearances that I need. I to. don't, I have no, I, before we watched that episode of, uh, Mr. Belvedere, I had no idea who that kid was. And I still don't, I can't even picture him in my mind right now, but that kid managed to be in every great show in the eighties. Like if you tell me that kid was in Dukes of Hazard or the A team, <laughs> they should build a fucking monument to the kid. God damn. What a life. It's quite the run. It's been fun seeing like uh, sitcoms that I'm aware of but have never watched before and the fucking theme songs. Oh, crazy. Yeah. They really they went all in at that time on what a theme song should be. The 80s cared about the theme song. They really did. They did. It, it was it was a, it was it was like they were all about making a great first impression and they did it mm-hmm. very well. Yeah. So that has been my update. That is not a terrible news for them, not us. I'm glad you've gone the extra mile and researched this kid. I'm in awe of this kid. What's the actor's name again? I, I believe Ian. Well, it's the they transgendered, so they go by Ina Fried now, but they were Ian okay. Fried at the time. Uh, okay, okay, got it. Dang, man. Yeah. They're actually like a really big tech journalist from what I could tell now. Like they, really? they have had a substantial career post that and my brief research of them. What an interesting life. I bet they've got yeah. tons of crazy stories. Oh, I imagine so. I was expecting it was going to be sort of like trying to find somebody from MVP2 or whatever, where it's just they know there's no digital footprint. But I'd love to talk to him. Their field. And be like, yeah. be, to tell me that you, you can be honest with me. Ricky Schroeder was a prick, right? He oh, looked like he a must prick. Have been. Yeah. With Silver Spoons was like, is it just he's a rich kid? Is that the whole premise of that show? Yeah. Yeah. He's a rich kid and he's got a race car bed and his dad's really cool. And then he's got, like, I think his mom's dead, maybe, and his dad has, like, an assistant or, like, a coworker or maybe a girlfriend who's really cool. I think it was Aaron Gray. And, uh, and then he just, like, he just, like, is a teenager that has <laughs> issues and shit, right? <laughs> Eric just what? posted a description. Oh, which did he? Is Ricky Stratton is a spoiled rich kid who lives the life that many kids dream of, but he still suffers from the problems that many teens do. Yeah. The tone of that is such of like rich people also have problems. <laughs> I remember, well, that was what the eighties was all about, right? Rich people also have problems. Uh, I uh, I remember an episode where he got he broke he got broken up with by the girl he was in love with, and they played that song "Broken Wings." You know, take these broken wings, and he was it was like fucking intense. I felt really bad for him. 
It was really oh, depressing. Wow. Yeah. I think that show shows how TV has changed so much where that was the thing that you wanted to see was somebody be rich. It was like the early 2000s also. Yes. Like yeah. that continued through this is like, look at these rich people and like, they're just like, there's rich and there's money and all this stuff. And now you're just like these fucking people. That's such a great point. Yeah. But isn't that why stuff like, like Fresh Prince worked because, because Will wasn't from that environment. Like he was like the audience. Yes, exactly. Exactly. What That's why great, Brewster's yeah, Millions was such a success too. Same kind of thing. I bet you there's an interesting transition point of like Silver Spoons to Fresh Prince to like Malcolm in the Middle, which is for me like what I view as like a sitcom growing up where it's just poor people, very poor people. But but they had that with like Roseanne. That's true. And it didn't get much poorer. I think the Roseanne, the Connors were way poorer than the Malcolm in the Middle family. I think they were like really they were struggling. It was a big part of the show, right? They were struggling constantly. Yeah. And, and still time. finding the humor in life. Yep. It's such a shame that Roseanne Barr turned out to be wacky because that is such a good fucking show. I still, if I see it on, I'll still catch like an old episode. I'll still watch it and it still holds up. It's one of those shows that like is always going to be good. Always going to uh, be funny. Do you remember when she sang the national anthem? <laughs> I was always surprised that someone with those political views would shit all over the national anthem. <laughs> that I, Like, is it not the crazy? Andrew, do you know about this? Do you, no. I, I, you're Really? I have no idea. You're a sports guy and you don't and you haven't seen this. I feel like Roseanne Uh, Barr is just a hole for me. Like I I have zero point of reference really for anything. Wow. Okay. I I mean, don't feel like you got to watch the whole thing right now, but you can just skip in about 15 seconds to the start of it. And um, this was in San Diego when this happened. So it was all over the news constantly. I remember like growing up and this was like the craziest. Oh, so bad. (laughs) it was that how you got canceled back then uh, well i mean like no because she just Uh, kept it's not like it not it's not like it ended her oh it didn't no no it was a lot of controversy it 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 didn't do her any favors but no (laughs) she kept going uh there was no canceling back then no Uh, okay you know there uh let me ask Jeff if maybe you know, is, that, is it better or worse than Carl Lewis's national anthem? <laughs> I was thinking about this the other day. I can't, I can't answer that. What was that one? It is... Oh, no. It's <laughs> stunning. Like, people are booing Roseanne at Roseanne's. Carl Lewis sings this and it is the basketball players like laughing at him openly. <laughs> it's it's so it's so does he just botch it? Oh, it's so it's just the <laughs> worker. Oh man. <laughs> I forgot about I forgot this existed. Oh, it's so brutal. Oh, man. <laughs> oh it's so good. I think Carl Lewis is just more entertaining. Oh, definitely. <laughs> God. Definitely. <laughs> should we should we take both those clips and make them duet? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> that was something I was talking talking to Andrew about recently. It's just I find it so strange that in non-international games, the American national anthem is still sang at all games. What? Like, who- really? Is it really? Well, like it, it's like two, like two basketball teams from America will sing the national anthem before they start. Yeah. Wait. Like that's weird to me, dude. Wait, but, wait what are you saying exactly? I think I don't well, follow it, exactly what you're saying. It, it's for it's for other countries. It's like if you play an international game, both countries will sing the national anthem. You're singing it to yourselves. I like that it's oh. such a culture shock. Like the idea is that the anthem is supposed to be like a welcome to our country is how I he is viewing yeah, it. Yeah, like like okay. if a, if a Premier League game, like <laughs> like Tottenham versus Arsenal, they sang the British national anthem, you'd be like, wait, who's here? What? Who's this No, for? see, it's just a different in culture. In America, yeah. Yeah. there is this thing called national pride. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know that it exists in the UK, but yeah. we're, most people are, even with the, even in the turmoil political turmoil of our country right now and the division between uh the, you know the democrats and the republicans people uh people have are proud to be from here and it's uh, it's considered like a a showing of esprit de corps and and unity to uh to do the national anthem in the it's even worse in the army if it gets everyone all together then i guess it works let, let me 
pose this. Gavin, when you hear your national anthem, you hear it. It's typically in an international setting or, or whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to hear that, and I'm going to hear the Italian one okay. or something. Mm -hmm. So do you feel pride for that national anthem? Like, when you hear it, are you like, you know, like you feel something for it? Uh, I mean, I, I relate to it, I guess. I think I, it's not a very good song, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was uh, a bit drab. <laughs> imagine hearing it so many times in your life that it means literally nothing to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is where I'm at with it. Yeah, for, for me, it's definitely like, oh, something of note is happening, probably. Like, I, I should look around and see what's going on. I, I, uh, I guess I'm an outlier. I like it. I don't, it doesn't bother me at all. I, I will say the army goes too far with it. Like, there are movie theaters on army bases, you know, for soldiers to go to the movies, just like, mm -hmm. a, you know, other normal person off base. And they play the fucking national anthem before the movies. And you got to stand up and salute or like put your hand on your heart and shit. And, and it's, it's like, it's just, it's, I'm just seeing Tommy boy. It's not even new. It's not even a new release. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a dollar theater, you know, but you still got to, that, like, that's where I'm like, all right, let's calm down. Is, is the national anthem more for the people that live in the country or for the people that are visiting the country as like an introductory? I always assumed it was like a brief presentation for the visiting or for the, uh, you know, the other country. I'm just imagining like getting arrested in a foreign country and using the I didn't hear the national anthem as a defense. I didn't I didn't know how the rules worked. I didn't get the vibe of this place. <laughs> Some countries have absolutely banger national anthems. And I feel like, oh, what a the, the US and the UK don't qualify. Yeah, I don't I don't feel great about oh, Canada. Uh. Um, yeah, I would. Canada is probably the most boring one to me. No offense. Uh, I would put <laughs> England would be least boring than America than Canada in terms of our three countries. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can't necessarily argue that. Although I feel like the, America has like three anthems, don't they? We got we, we got a song for everything. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of anthems. I feel like I hear you guys singing about different things at different times, and it's I get caught off guard occasionally. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, there's the star. I feel like there's the Star Spangled Banner one, and yeah, then that's I feel the like national anthem, right? Yeah, but then I feel like I sometimes hear them singing a different song. America the be Beautiful. Wrong. America the uh, yeah that. Uh, fuck it. Lee Greenwood sang a song, and now we got to hear that forever. God bless America. <laughs> Did you see either someone? <laughs> Someone shout all over your theory of being born in the middle of the decade. Oh, yeah, I did see that. <laughs> and and then I actually saw a lot of people, surprisingly, coming to your defense. So someone pointed out that uh, being born in the middle of 1975 is not the middle of the decade. Technically, the middle of the decade is midnight on the 31st of December, 1974. But a lot of people, and I never see this on the internet, a lot of people chimed in and were like, ah, oh, just let him have it, man. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, just let me have it. It's the middle of the middle of the middle of the middle. I understand that it's not like the mathematical middle, yeah. but it's in like, but there's a narrative to how middle it is that I think right. is fun. I just found that so funny. Yeah, I thought that was pretty funny too. I want to listen to every country song now. I'm going to look into that. I want to, because I did every state song. There's some bangers in there. I know we That's about that. what, God, I couldn't remember for the life of me what it is you did. You just said, I want to do that. And I went, I, God, I swear he did this. <laughs> I did the state songs. Uh, my favorite one, I think, is Rhode Island's song, because Rhode Island's song is that I've been to every state and they suck compared to this one. <laughs> it's the only one that's like combative. So would you expect, Gavin, if, uh, let's say, the Los Angeles Dodgers were to play the Chicago Cubs that they should play the California and Chicago state songs before the game. <laughs> that would actually why, be why you... more on board for that. I mean, that would make more sense, but just also just, just crack on, just play the game. Yeah. No, it's I just got to it like, what, <laughs> what is, we're, we do it. Uh, we dial it in a little too deep in America, I think. Cause like, what the fuck is the, the state song for? That's like every, I, I don't know if they do this in England, but every high school in America has its own song too. And you're supposed to like, you grew up thinking like you're supposed to learn your high school song for some fucking reason. And then your, no, col then your college has a song and then your state has a song. Maybe it happens at the university level, but I, yeah, I never had a song for my school. I really like the idea that anytime any Chicago sports team plays, they have to sing the Super Bowl shuffle as a representation <laughs> of the state. I'm fully supportive of that. If they, whatever, if we're doing state songs, we can move to that. I'm, I'm for that. I want to hear that every game. 
That is like the, every time the governor fucking gives a presentation, <laughs> <laughs> and he has any kind of a press conference, they have to play Super Bowl Shuffle first. <laughs> Jeff, do you remember your high school song? Nah, not at all. Not for wow. no. Nah, I can't. Uh, no. Do you remember yours, Eric? Yeah, yeah. It was just like a little, like it was just like a little, like probably like ten oh. line, twelve line. All right. Thing. Well, let's hear it. Well, I just remember that it we were the Wolf Pack. That was our mascot, oh. the West Hills Wolf Pack. Um, and we would talk about, we would say, high above the River Valley stands a silver, blue, and black. <laughs> uh, strong, I think it was strong beside our alma, alma mater. We are one. We are the pack. The, this is the part that I remember all the time. Yeah. So stand the silver, stand the blue, and stand the mighty black. West Hills forever, our alma mater. We are one. <laughs> we are the pack. I remember that and i shouldn't i remember all of that that's pretty good would that go before a sports game yeah or at like the end of like a rally or like a yeah. uh, rally is kind of a maybe touchy term now uh maybe at the end of a presentation or, or like when they would like when they would have an assembly school assembly you'd have to say it yeah yeah. You jogged my memory. I don't remember all of mine, but I remember it ended with, we love you, dear old Theodore, because <laughs> I went to Theodore High School. Oh. That's great. Yeah, I, I think I think it's quite nice to have like a, like a group sense. Of, I feel like every sports game I attended with my school just started with like a whistle blowing. There hey was guys. absolutely nothing. It's like, everyone here? All right, crack on. Go on. Hey, guys. Do you think we need an official face song? <laughs> oh, similar to eric's cool. wolf pack thing uh, that's like a little like, yeah i like that idea like um, the pride of face yeah the pride of face sounds great i really like that <laughs> that's the we have a title take on the sun with gear built to last our friends at shady rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades and an affordable price shady rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. And that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you purchase. Every purchase supports the Shady Rays Impact Program, which works directly with nonprofits and their communities to empower and make adventure accessible for all walks of life. From childhood cancer patients to young adults with serious health conditions, Shady Rays is making a lasting impact on their lives through sunglasses. If you don't love your Shady Rays, exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Their team always has your back. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code FACE for 50% off two-plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Wow, that's the best kind of notification. That's the sound of another sale on Shopify and the moment another business dream becomes a reality. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Whether you're selling gerplers or fridge magnets, Shopify simplifies selling online and in person so you can focus on successfully growing your business. Shopify covers every sales channel, from an in-person POS system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform, and even lets you sell across social media marketplaces like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. Packed with industry-leading tools ready to ignite your growth, Shopify gives you complete control over your business and your brand without having to learn any new skills in designer code. And thanks to 24-7 help and an extensive business course library, Shopify is there to support your success every step of the way. What's incredible to me about Shopify is how no matter how big you want to grow, Shopify is there to empower you with the confidence and control to revolutionize your business. Now it's your turn to get serious about selling and try Shopify today. This is possibility powered by Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com face, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com face to take your business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash face. Today's episode is sponsored by PayPal Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. But did you know it only takes a few seconds to get it? That means if you go to add it to your laptop or iPhone right now, you can be done before this ad read is even over. 
And it's fantastic to be able to knock out things like that so quickly and efficiently. I mean, we have so many things to do in a day. Just being able to get something done quick, always fantastic. But you know what else works fast? Honey's deal-finding abilities. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Now, how it works is imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. I've saved money on things from clothing to tech, food. It's just so easy to use, and it's great to know that if there's a coupon out there, I am getting it. And did you know that Honey doesn't just work on desktops? It works on your iPhone, too. Just activate on Safari on your phone and save on the go. Getting Honey seriously only takes a few seconds, and by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid in supporting the show. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com face. That's joinhoney.com face. Can I show you guys what they did to my high school field after this Please. was after I graduated? Yeah. Oh, it's blue. It's so oh, blue. blue. Pack. It, it looks so you see it from the top and you go, oh, OK. When you see it with pink <laughs> on it, it's fucking insane. Oh, my, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's I hard on the eyes, dude. I don't know why they did it. It looks so bad. It's awesome. If I was squinting, I'd think I was at SeaWorld. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's got to be discombobulating to try to catch a ball. In what that. I've noticed is that American schools, they, they've got some budget, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they've got some bunts. Look at that. It's incredible. Yeah, big time. Big time. <laughs> I'm not saying you're wrong, but you're looking at a blue field and going like, wow, they got money. Like, it's well, just I still need <laughs> to do that, I assume. Well, I bet it's like a, I bet there's budget in British schools, but all of your buildings are like 7,000 years old, so they probably have to spend most of the budget just fixing shit and keeping them running, <laughs> right? Like nothing in America is over 30 years old, so it doesn't, you know, everything's pretty much brand new here. They got to print 20,000 towels at the end of every year. <laughs> that money has to go somewhere. With the tea towel budget? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think all of our money goes to keeping the stuff upright and also keeping it looking old, which I think yeah. is really expensive. <laughs> so stupid, but yeah, you're right. The cost of old. <laughs> tea towel budget. Tea towel. That's tea towel but I'm glad I've, I haven't thought about that in a while. We still haven't made our tea towel. Yeah, like we should. That was something we wanted for RTX, wasn't it? That uh, was an RTX talked idea. About it, yeah. Yeah. We, we ended up settling on the museum, though. Let's yeah. Be, museum sounds great. Yeah. Every time I hear anything about the museum. I had Sounds to go awesome. around my house taking pictures of fucking 8,000 dumb things next to a banana for that. So <laughs> <laughs> That was your own doing. I know. Like, the banana thing you just complained about, but you did that. Why well, is the was the, like, the most common sense thing I had. Everybody knows how big a banana is. Yeah. Like, if I put a cup, you'd be like, well, I don't know how many, how many ounces is that cup. I don't know. I would, yeah. Especially if you put a Gerpler down there, I would I have no idea what to do. Right. I'd assume You'd everything was huge. Put a phone. Well, I'd be, I was going to say put a phone down, but I'm using the phone to take the photos, so I can't. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. My hands really were tied. Yeah. <laughs> Even with the phone, maybe it's the XL version. I don't know. It's all sorts of different sizes and variations. That's, it's very true. A banana is a banana. True. Oh, this was mine. I found it. Uh, this is it was field? A, <laughs> a field. So I, I'd, I'd, walk, I'd walk out of the school. I'd walk through between some trees. I'd cross a busy road. And uh, go through a gap in the hedge, and we'd play there. <laughs> no I mean, it looks like a and field. it wasn't blue. Yeah, yeah. Didn't have any lines on it or anything, but. <laughs> I mean, the photo. I don't know. I feel like I'm looking at like a sea, like something horrible. There is the vibe I get from that photo. You think that's horrible? Well, I just I get the sense of like in a movie, you know, where like they show the top down of like what's gonna get bombed or like what would does something <laughs> bad happen there. That's how I feel when I look at that photo. Yeah, you like you get down to ground level and there's just a little sign that says uh, this plaque commemorates the 4,000 lost <laughs> yeah. souls buried on yeah. this field. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> That's kind of a shit field, Gavin. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's green for a start. It's not even straight. They crookeded it. It's all it's <laughs> fucked. But at least it's not blue. I think yeah. that's the important thing. It also kind of looks like it's on an incline. I don't know if you could tell. The only like feature of the field that would let you know it was like a an athletic field is that that thing in the bottom right that kind of looks like a big cigarette. That was a, a little like long jump pit. 
Oh, that was a long. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's just like a little bit of sand with a with a run up. Did you compete? I gave it a go. I was shit. I was crap at that. Long jump. Yeah, well, people used to do triple jump. I never understood that. Just jump. Just jump. Just jump once. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that is more impressive. The triple jump as opposed yeah. to. I think this is my high school football field, but it jogs no memory and it is unremarkable in every way. Wow. Hmm. But that's so proper. That's nice. I'm pretty sure that's my high school. That looks at least community field. college level. Really? It's pretty. It's my high school was a my high school was a prison. They uh they built my high school to be a prison, <laughs> but they built it on marshland, and the foundation cracked in multiple places while they were constructing it. So they abandoned the <laughs> idea of it being a prison, and it sat unused for a while. And then they decided, well, let's convert it into a high school because it doesn't matter if they sink. Did and it so, have like prisony features? Yeah, it was not a welcoming place. <laughs> At all. <laughs> That's dark. <laughs> but it looks so nice. You got the, 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 the logo on the Dude, middle I'll of it. You got lines. You got numbers. The track field. They show it. you the fucking prison of my fucking high school. Here you go. Real welcoming that. <laughs> <laughs> it fucking looks. I think you could show that to people that live internationally. It, that looks like a high school in a movie. Does it really? It does. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just a yeah. lot of fucking concrete and hallways. Yeah. I get what you're saying, but dude, that looks like a American high school, the movie, big time, big time. Should, should we try and do a little face tour and record episodes from each of our schools? <laughs> I don't no, want, I don't want to go to my I school. I <laughs> fucking <laughs> absolutely Why? not. Because I, I feel like it would suck for the person whose school you're at, but it'd be so fascinating for everyone else. That's what happens when I googled American high school, and that's what came the first response. <laughs> <laughs> Much nicer. Oh, look, there's a place called American High School. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> that looks like a prison. Yeah, I, never mind. I'm glad I didn't go to American High School. <laughs> Let's know if you attended American High School. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? Oh. Was it as bad as it looks? Like, that's surely not in the U.S. I don't know. Well, that's that's like a like an embassy style place, right? In a different country. Is that your football field, Nick? Yeah, that's my high school's uh, football field. Damn. Street View looks better than when <laughs> the I went. Google Street View. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Proper scoreboard. It's mental. Oh, what they have a scoreboard now? Yeah. <laughs> oh. This is what the that's what the front of my high school looked like. It was very like here's the performing arts center and. That's it. There's nothing. And then everything else was just, here's the rest of the school, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, it was like all outdoor. Like my whole high school was like, obviously we were inside for school, for classes, but like getting in between the buildings, it, we were all, it was all outdoor, like the whole time. Really? It's a nice building though. It's Southern California, man. Like the, the, the thing that hit in the middle... These, these wolves, wolves, these wolf statues. Oh, you had wolves in there. Wolves, wolves in the middle of the school. That's like the high school where that's, that's like so the Veronica cool. Mars high school, dude. That's fancy. Yeah. Well, they shot the Veronica Mars was filmed at SDSU, so like, it's like the col like the college in San Diego. So Damn. how did you go to an all wolf school, but you came away <laughs> with rat and dog based personas? <laughs> That's a great point. I think I think wolves were shoved down my throat for such a long time that now You're pretty I'm pretty like, anti-wolf. Yeah, I don't know that I'm like firmly anti-wolf, but I would say that I'm in the camp. I'm pretty like wolf neutral at this point. Like they don't really do anything for me. I just go look oh, at okay. that. Look at these big dogs. Like they don't do anything for me. At your worst, were you anti-wolf? Like have you rebounded oh, from that in, or in high school? Pretty firmly anti-wolf. So is this your high school, Gavin? Yeah, that was like the sixth form building. That looks like Hogwarts. You went to fucking looks like you went to Harry Potter Abby. School. <laughs> yeah. Did you have servants in the high school? <laughs> no, but in there was the trophy cabinet where Dan used to stand. <laughs> <laughs> the, where he was a trophy case wanker? Yeah. <laughs> Eric, did the wolves have names? No, like no. We were just simply the wolf pack. We were a collection of wolves. Um that I suppose shared a consciousness. I'm not really, again, I have never really thought that deeply about it, but um, 
Was the rival school of the vampires? No, the rival <laughs> school was Santana. <laughs> um, oh. And their mascot, I don't know if this is what it is still. I assume it is because it's Santee, California, and nothing changes. Uh, their mascot is the Sultan, and it is, and it looks like that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> It, it looks like the Akinator. <laughs> it does does look like, it, it looks <laughs> like he's gonna guess who you're who you're imagining. It looks like Zoltar after he's changed the tire. <laughs> and Zoltar realizing he needs to change the tire. He's real upset about it. I wonder if corporate sponsors will ever sponsor high schools like they sponsor arenas. Like, could you have hmm. the Ak like Akinator high? <laughs> I guess I mean, I don't know why you couldn't. Right? Oh, like into my high school field, <laughs> like your high that. school, your high school. You could be the Goodyear blimps. <laughs> OK, Andrew wins for the. For the yeah. high school field. Oh, my high school field was great. <laughs> mm -hmm. What could you get done there? Like a uh, you can mow that lawn. <laughs> so get done there. Recess time. Get the weed whacker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Like a good game of uh, frisbee back there. That's that's about it. You got frisbee. You got mowing the lawn. You can stand there and take a photo holding your Cleaning. fucking ray gun for your men in black costume. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that was a different yard, but yeah, uh -oh. you could do that. You could clean the bird bath. There are all sorts of things you could do at my high school field. You are very funny, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> you can, Nick said you could do the sewing machine. No, I have never. I have never done the sewing machine on grass. I don't trust it. I, that's a purely a concrete scenario. Did you have Did you have uniforms? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Every day of the week in my school. Oh <laughs> uh, no, no, I did not have a uniform. Eric, did you? No, 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 no. We were yeah. normal Southern California. I mean, it might as well have been a uniform of uh, shorts and our Hurley <laughs> T-shirt, but no, it was not a mandated uniform. Nick, I'm gonna, I, I can all but guarantee you didn't have one, right? Uh, no, that was a, definitely a public school. I did work at a school uniform store, though. <laughs> Wait, what? There's a store <laughs> specifically <laughs> what? for school uniforms. What? Yeah, just <laughs> giving it. Oh story? no, no! You're not given your school uniform. You have to like buy this stuff. You had to buy. Well, I mean, we we bought it, but you didn't have to go to a store and buy it. Oh, <laughs> get... yeah, they had a store at the mall. <laughs> at the mall? Uh, not even at, at the, the school? mall? Yeah, it was at the mall. <laughs> you worked at the mall? Did we <laughs> Did know you? that? Oh, no. I don't think so. I forgot. That. No, all these stories about all these times. <laughs> where I want to invent a show where we hang out at the mall. We've talked about one all work at the mall together. You never mentioned that you worked at a literal mall. It you didn't draft the school uniform store. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, hmm, that's a good point. <laughs> I think I messed up. Well, maybe it wasn't good. What was it like working at the school uniform store in the mall? Uh. It was weird, because, so it was like a Catholic school uniform store, and uh, the, <laughs> so specific. I, 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 they only sold like <laughs> specific, like sp for specific schools, and they had different age ranges, and they had like jumpers for certain ages, and then like uh, a, a wide variety of like uh, skirts, shirts, and then like those khaki pants. So if you wanted to, you could buy a uniform for for the of the wrong school and wear it to the school you're going to. I imagine they frown upon it, but yeah, you totally could. Like you didn't check you didn't check somebody's school ID when you sold them a t shirt or anything. No, we had like a binder with like a reference page and we're just like, what school do you go to? And they're like, oh, what size? Like, okay, here you go. Take a look at this. And uh you're mostly dealing with parents, but sometimes it's kids that are like, This sucks. <laughs> so it was a weird job. Is it all like do you, are you guys maintaining the stock for all the schools or is that something that like you put an order in and then they come pick it up in two weeks? Uh, we're maintaining stock. So it's like something you always kind of cycle through. Um, most okay. of the time, though, I was on the floor. I didn't deal so much with the, the other money thing. It was uh, mm -hmm. I worked at a Hollister that I hated. And the person I was dating at the time was like, you want a job at, th at this? <laughs> at this uh <laughs> this uniform store and so i worked oh so that's two places in the mall jeff i'm sorry what yeah, the hell? The hollister doesn't exist insane. outside of the mall i forgot i'm sorry 
What made it so Nick you hated done... Hollister so much that you were gonna go to like it's Hollister? Uh, it what... smells funny in there, and the music sucks. What is Hollister? <laughs> Oh, this is like a dickhead clothing store. Yeah. Okay. And you feel like a dickhead. Exactly. The music sucks. <laughs> so you went from dickhead clothing store to selling school clothes? To religious yeah. dickhead clothing store. Yeah. <laughs> I would have definitely bought outfits at different schools, and I, I would have felt uh, yeah. real sneaky about that. Absolutely. I would have felt like a secret agent. Slipped through those holes undetected. Once again, sneaky. That's a I, sneaky move by me. Like, I had a friend in high school <laughs> who anytime you quit your job... It was known he wanted to buy your work shirt. So, like, my friend quit working at Eckerd's <laughs> Drug, and he would, like, I'll give you 10 bucks for your work shirt. Don't turn it in. And he, and he would just, like, collect them. He, he had shirts, <laughs> like, collared shirts from, like, every pharmacy Ugh. and grocery store or wherever you had them uh, in our area. And I never knew what he wanted to do. I always assumed he had, like, a plan with them. Like, was his name Agent 47? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, his name was Brian. But oh. I always assumed he would, like, sneak in and steal stock or something. But I don't know. Or, I, or he might have just thought it was really cool <laughs> to pretend like he worked at a 7-Eleven. I'm imagining going into Brian's house and seeing, like, the Seven Eleven shirt framed to being like, yeah, this is this is game worn right here. Game worn, two thousand three, two thousand four, Seven Eleven. I wonder which work shirt gets you the most access. Right, like, I think like a FedEx shirt. You could walk into any building. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. FedEx, UPS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe UPS. My brain immediately answered president, but that's a terrible answer. It's not. It's just like a suit, I guess. I'd love it if the president had to wear a uniform. <laughs> <laughs> like he had to dress like Uncle Sam every day. And he had to go to the mall to the president's store to get his outfit. <laughs> he just gets one visitor every four years. <laughs> oh, man. That's so funny. Fake work or fu or f fork? What is, Nick, what is that, Nick? My friend created this thing that he called FERC, which is fake work. And oh, what, his parents made him get a job in high school. And he worked at a Schlotzky's. But what he would do is he would put on his uniform. He'd tell his parents he was going to work. He'd drive his car to the Schlotzky's, leave it, and then have <laughs> someone else pick him up. And he would go and do whatever throughout the day. Then he'd go back in his car and come home. And he thought he was getting away with it for a long time, and then his dad went through the drive <laughs> through one day. It was like, oh, no. "Is uh, is so and so here?" And they're like, "Who? Oh, <laughs> oh no!" Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's classic, like empty briefcase style of uh, going somewhere every day. <laughs> that's fucking that's awesome. What was he doing about not having money? Uh, he just he. He's literally the same guy. I went on a trip with him to Vegas. This will tell you how he is with his money. And on the first day, he's like, he brought a certain amount of money, and he told me he lost it all in the airport casino before he even <laughs> left. <laughs> and he just, he just bummed off of us the rest of the trip. And then on the last day, I don't know where he got this money from, too. He was all the way up on um, a... a not craps. What's the uh, the other one with the spinny the uh, roulette roulette wheel. roulette? And roulette. he was yeah. up like a thousand bucks. I have no idea where he got the money to even put down the money. And then I was like, "Oh, that's great. We should go." He's like, "Just one more, just one more." And then he lost it all. And it's I. So that'll tell you I like that he fell he at the first hurdle of Vegas, and that's why they had to sell Empire Records. That's a shame. And Schlossky's went under. <laughs> I, I love the idea of of fucking it. Oh, oh yeah. if there's any furkers in the uh, in the oh I, in the regulation you, listeners, dude, you've been furking for like 18 years. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you just play with you just play with cameras and video games. That's not a real job. That's fair. <laughs> We're all furkers. It's, some, somehow it's hard work though. I don't know how. No, I know. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. really tiring. Yeah, Gav, for the record and for the audience, Gav, you're the hardest working person I've ever met in my life. I feel like we're all up there. Yeah. Well, yeah. I know I know someone who did a Nick like approach with his friend, but they they lost their job and they were too scared to tell their parents and they lived at home. And so they spent the next three and a half weeks spending their working hours at the library. They would they would drive out and they'd just park and they'd hide at the library. Because they figured Aww. that that'd be one spot where they wouldn't be discovered. Oh <sighs> it's tragic. Very tragic. Also, just like why just say. 
I couldn't spend three consecutive weeks at the library from open to close, like an eight hour shift. This is terrible. I mean, unless you were using the library to find a job. I don't I don't know if they were. I think they were just hiding. I think it was purely a hide move. <laughs> it's like a, mor- a morning period. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you hide, Andrew, if you were, uh, like, say your, your occupation was to run marathons for us, mm, where okay. would you go instead? Um, I, well, I'd, hmm. and I need to present that I'm running marathons? I'm trying to figure we'll say, out. <laughs> well, say you're going out training for marathons, but okay. clearly you're not going to go and do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, where would I hide? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, what's, uh, uh um, Maybe like the movie theater, but you might you might go there. Yeah, I think a movie theater is good. It's a good You'd have to, to only see, but, see mm. movies you know Gavin doesn't want to see. Yeah, anything that's just in regular motion, I think, or maybe <laughs> things with slow motion. Maybe you don't want to see slow motion <laughs> after all the slow motion you see, huh? <laughs> the mall, the mall is not a great place. I I'll I find, I'll find I you school. immediately. One time, and I encountered a teacher at the mall. Uh, that wasn't good. I'm a, I would be right up your ass if you were trying to hide. Oh, you would. Yeah. yeah. No, I couldn't hide from you at the mall. There's no way. Where'd I go? Uh, well, I feel like certain stores, I don't think you're going to the GameStop. I think there's certain places where I feel pretty <laughs> you're safe right. to I'm avoid you. You're right. I'm pretty fucking if, far away from GameStop. <laughs> what if we just did it, like, right in front of everyone's faces? What if we opened a store called The Hiding Spot? And it doesn't really sell anything. It's just where people can go if they want to be somewhere. But I don't think anyone would ever go in there unless they were hiding from something. That's an interesting atmosphere, though. A bunch of people mm. hiding from something. It's like the money uh, laundromat. It's it could be. Yeah. It could just be full of like, almost like little. Oh, you know, it could almost be like. It could almost be like uh, uh, in a uh, cubicles in an office. With just like little chairs, <laughs> and then when you sit down, and they're not tall walls, but you sit down, and then you can't make eye contact with anybody else. You can't see them, and then you can just kind of like play on your phone and pretend like the so world what would doesn't it be? exist. You walk in, it would just be a bunch of people pretending to be working. Yeah, it would look like it would look like office space. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we all put in our crisps order, didn't we? Our chips. Yeah, oh, we, we, we were did. gonna record that today, but. It, well, I don't have mine yet, so they clearly didn't get in in time. There you go. I found it extremely difficult to pare down to four. So hard. I, I did too, and I, um, I had to take a stance. Because, you know, we were talking ahead of time about, like, what, what constitutes a chip, like, what would be appropriate, and we agreed that mm-hmm. c- corn snacks would work. Uh, stuff like Cheetos would be allowed, and that makes it really hard. I don't know about your countries, but it makes it really hard in America because there's just so much variety of that kind of stuff. And so I decided that I was going to stick to the letter of the word, and I only picked potato chips. So I don't know that I picked like the four best across that broad spectrum that we had allowed, but I definitely think I nailed the four potato chips specifically. Are we filming that on an office day? Yeah, I think so. Yes, I think so. Like at the at the office. Yeah, Correct. that's. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah, because we have other stuff we have to do. <clears throat> Are we not doing that stuff in person? Yeah, let's do it. Which stuff? The well, chip stuff doesn't necessarily need to be, but the other things that are planned. The you made a, a very good consideration of we're st- we still need to do the stinky porta potty thing. Yep. Yeah. But Eric didn't want it to be done until post RTX because yep. people. Are gonna be in there, but I was voted down, so we'll so be if doing it smells, it. <laughs> you know who to blame. Yeah, don't. I mean, certainly not me, because I've made my point, and uh, I was told get a bucket. If anything, it gives people a much more authentic experience. I don't think that's Is what people it? want. I don't think people like, <laughs> like one of the things in the in the face museum is just a, a whiff. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you oh. stick your head in the box and get a whiff. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's gonna throw up. Yeah. Can we ask? Can we get ask West to make a whiff box for us? Yeah, uh, <laughs> just like the in, in the huff zone. I, I mean, <laughs> the like huff. the the porta potty's gonna be the fucking whiff box, dude. Yeah, like, we don't have to make anything. We're gonna make it on Wednesday. Um, oh, what if it's in the hole? What if it's in the shitter hole? The whiff zone. <laughs> the you just put it in there. <laughs> you gotta stick your head in the shitter hole. You gotta stick your head in the shitter hole to go into the whiff zone. Yeah. 
I don't want to. I don't want to do that to people. That's too bad. That's terrible. Well, whiff zone is optional. You don't have to. Yeah. But if you want to enter the whiff zone, yeah. you know you where to go. You don't have to ram your head in the huff box. <laughs> Hey, did we include the porta potty in the museum? I don't know if we wrote that down, but I always uh, there's the no yeah. way that it's not there. No, yeah, the pretty, museum should sure be built is. around it. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. I'll uh, okay. I'll double check, and then someone will go, "Well, no, it's not," and then it it, it will be. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> well, been, now, that, now that's been spoken into the universe. So just yeah, did you sure. did you take a picture of it next to a ruler, Eric? I didn't okay. know. I no, because it's it's in a place that's at oh, the okay. office that they have access to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So no one had I to really take a picture with a banana next to the porta potty. So um, yeah. Eric wants us to wrap up. Uh, yep. He wants us to stop talking. Uh, how did you guys feel recording on a Friday? Different vibe. Mm -hmm. Different vibe, right? I was a little. I felt a little thrown at the beginning. It just felt like I did feel a little like a little off my game. Yeah. Do you? Well, everyone no, you was blame, late, so. Yeah. Do you blame <laughs> that on Friday or do you blame that on? I think it's a little panicking. bit. Of, I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, yeah, because I had all my nervous energy still yesterday. Yeah, as if we were recording. I didn't know what to do with mm. myself. I was all hopped up, and then I got kind of tired. Then now today, I've, I have less energy because I I freaked out about it yesterday. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't spend the hyped up energy where I needed to. Gavin, I think it was a double play. If we're recording earlier and a Friday, I think both things come. Yeah, to interesting. To effect. Gavin and I hung out socially the other day. It was really nice. It was, it was good nice. to see you. That's great. Yeah. What did you two do? Uh, we went to this bar, uh, I don't drink of course, uh, but we went to this bar and met with, uh, two other friends of ours, Nick and Jason Saldana, and we just, we, uh, nice. we recreated a photo that I'd taken 18 years earlier. <laughs> oh yeah, do you want to put, put that, in? do you have that? Should I put that in? Yeah, sure. Okay. Let it was me, cute. Me, uh... if, if you, for, historically, uh, within the context of Rooster Teeth, N uh, Jason is one of the guys that was, uh, helped create Rooster Teeth. And red versus blue, and then his brother Nick uh, uh, also exists. <laughs> his brother Nick actually hooked me up. He uh, yeah. he, gave, he gave me a name for something. Oh, oh. related to f face or just in general? Just in general for like a different project. But I was explaining I was explaining a project to him, and he threw out a name, and I'm definitely going to use that name now. So that was, this is from the day I met Jeff. This was I'd known uh, I'd met Jeff like an, an hour ago at this point in this photo. And uh, that's Jason with him. And I think Nick is actually in the mirror. You can see. Yeah, he is. Of him. And then, uh, so that was 2005, and this is 2023. <laughs> I got to say, I'm, I'm impressed with the hand, Jeff, because that is a very specific <laughs> hand gesture you have. We took a few photo. takes. <laughs> I, yeah, it took a while. <laughs> Gavin great. loves to, Gavin loves to retake a photo after a long period of time. It's one of his. I think it's funny. It's one of the, uh, yeah. It's one of the things that I like. Uh, I, I love about you. You you you're always on top of that. <laughs> and the, <laughs> something about people aging is so interesting to me. Like I, it's so weird to look at a picture of myself twenty years ago and be like, oh gee, because you don't notice any of it happening at the time. And you're yeah. Just like oof, yikes. But I think both of you look pretty good. Thanks, man. We should do that again in uh, another eighteen, uh, another eighteen more years. <laughs> eighteen more years, yeah. That's a long time, dude. Eighteen years. <laughs> That's a lot of time. Like I like that in the first picture I'd known you an hour, and in the second picture I've known you eighteen years. <laughs> <laughs> your finger looks the same, though. I gotta say, it does. <laughs> oh. I didn't even notice your finger. <laughs> yeah, I'm pointing at Jason for some reason. <laughs> you can see there's uh, most of my tattoos are still there back then, at least visible ones, except for my hand stuff. Yeah, you've had it. Oh, a yeah, that's crazy. Uh, I I guess we should probably uh, shoot this one in the back of the head. <laughs> uh, You're gonna kill this one? Yeah, this is this tie, is, tie a couple of nooses around his neck. I, I learned something, yeah. Gavin. You run west. I'm gonna run east. Okay. <laughs> oh shit! Whoa. I can only go north. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you learn? I learned that I don't know what scalping is, just to rehash that. I, I clearly, I thought, <laughs> I saw a lot of people being like I was scalping with my idea, and I really didn't think it was, and then I realized, no, no, it is. What did you think I didn't know what scalping was? was. I think, I thought scalping was, like, going above market value because you wanted to. <laughs> like, I understood, like, the secondhand market. Like, price Like, gouging. I thought intent. Yeah, like I thought intent mattered, but like on the surface where I was like, I'm buying tickets for a thing I never attend on, planned on attending, and I'm selling them for whatever the markup price of, I'm just scalping. That's a bad idea. Do not so, do that. So when all of us went, you mean scalping? Like that yeah. wasn't the hint? That wasn't the clue? 
No, I had to, I had to, you know, I had to, to think about it. I, I would intend marinate anything. You think that uh, I thought it's insane. That's so crazy. That was my processing was I'm not scalping because I'm not trying to rip people off. I'm just, I'm just selling at what the, the, the secondhand market is. But then I realized the secondhand market is literally the most you can get above the price. Yeah, it's the, it's so the scalping it's market. Scalping. God. Yeah. yeah. No, exactly. I'm saying I didn't know I and I know that. now. I learned. You not were scalping. I'm reselling. <laughs> you were yeah, that that's, way it goes that's to what me. I thought. And. <laughs> You were further so off than I was about being born in the middle of the 70s. <laughs> uh, okay, we... <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> That's so I love funny. it when we when we uh, admit <laughs> that we had a fundamental misunderstanding about something. Oh, yeah. That's the best. Well, here's the thing. We're too stupid to hide it, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I, like, none of us are smart enough to dig our way out of a hole. <laughs> you might as well just embrace the dirt. I wish I knew all the things that are common knowledge that I don't know. That's the problem. Like, Gavin taught me recently <laughs> that my keyboard had a second enter button on it. I had no idea. I would have never found that. I wish... I, I Honestly, the, first, the, the second I land in Vancouver, <laughs> we're sitting down and we're learning the keyboard. <laughs> I'm, running you, I'm gonna run you through every freaking button on that thing. You're gonna come away a much more efficient man. <laughs> Mario taught me how to type, okay? I got a Mario accreditation. He was an idiot, apparently. He really was incompetent. <laughs> Actually, it would be kind uh, okay. of funny supplemental content of you two teaching me key by key. Oh, don't worry. I'll definitely <laughs> film it. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to see you guys next week. Are we doing another episode next week? Well, and we've got office day. And we have office day next week as well. Okay. It's going to be an eventful f face week next week. We're going to top up our supplementals. I am very excited about both. And I also, I didn't even get to mention it, but I've been, uh, I've been riding my bike every day again to get back I, I, because of Eric. Honestly, I, I was complaining to Eric about how much I don't like to run or lift weights. And he was like, just ride your bike. When you rode your bike, you were fine. And I was like, oh, he's got a good point. So I've been riding my bike 22 miles every morning. Uh, and I've been, Getting doing it like six or seven in the morning, and so I've Jeez. discovered that the world is different. Even the bike paths and the parks are different at six and seven a.m. So I have a few observations that I. I, I, maybe I, I just want to point out week. we do need huh. to end, but I do want to point out that Jeff made me sound exacerbated from go, and that is not how the conversation <laughs> went. He's that he did an impression of me at the end of the conversation where he kept telling me how no, he's going to run, and so that was me at the end of the conversation. Yeah, it was the important part. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I just want to clarify. Okay, end this now. <laughs> I've also been putting uh, putting off constructing the, the scoops, the ice cream gloves, because uh, I felt like we could potentially do that in person and office. I think, I think that's <gasps> a yeah, great idea. I too. think that's part of that concept. So next week we could eat chips, do the gloves, and smell the Somstrom. Yep. The fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir that's going to be yep. a hell of a day. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I'm excited too. I wonder what else we can cram in there. <laughs> Well, the only way to find out is to end this, so that way time can move forward and we can get there. How, how, by the way, how are we getting Andrew what? in? Uh, by the like, way, pipe, by the way, piped what? In, how is it? How are we getting Andrew piped into the, uh, the stink potty experience? Well, we can talk about that. We can talk about that as soon as we end this episode. Okay, I can't. I have to go after this. My mom's in town. <laughs> I literally came from the airport to pick her up here to record this episode. Now I haven't even really oh, talked. Oh, we should to her wrap yet. up so you can. All right. Spend time with Tell you. Tell your mom I said I hi. Should. Oh, dude, you know what she got me for my birthday? This sucks. What What's did that? she get you? She just gave it to me right, right before we came in. You remember when I told you that guy's that story about the Tooneyville Choo Choo that I, I had? It was the, like, I think it was the cover of, an, of one of the. Oh, that plastic yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah, that I had a kid that played the little music records that were so fucking loud and obnoxious. My mom yeah. got me one for my birthday. I'm <gasps> so glad that, that I was going to do that and I changed. I yeah, didn't do no, that. She, here, you I almost ended up with two of them. I took a. Oh, dude, I would love to have two of them. I could have them race. Uh, yeah, I just hold on a second. I know Eric is excited about this and he wants me to send the photo. I saw, oh, yeah, we got to see this, this Tooneyville uh -huh. situation. Oh, I hit the wrong thing. Eric has moved into end show chat. Camera. Oh. I don't think I described it at the time when I posted my back. I was homeschooled. That was that joke. I don't think that was ever vocalized for people. Oh, I, guess it's not, <laughs> I knew. Watching. Was that the actual, the actual place? Yeah, that was my backyard <laughs> at the time of high school. <laughs> it's really good. I don't know why, but for... Well, hold on. Let me do it this way. Oh, we're having our time with Tooneyville. Yeah, I just... All right, here we go. Can I send this? Is it too big? Do we need Nitro? Is Nitro back? Let me see if I can do it this way. 
Discord's being a pain pace. There we go. Oh, it looks fucking brand oh, new. Right? Oh, look how great oh, that is! Incredible. That looks so nice. And, she, and, and it, it's it's a little different than I remembered. The little music discs you put in the top. There's four of them. I didn't remember, uh -huh. but there's a different song on each side. So you have it's like a full album. Oh. You have eight songs with this. <laughs> That's <thing>. awesome. <laughs> is it as loud as you remember? No, it's not super loud. My mom said that this oh. one is not as loud as previous ones. Uh, but I maybe I change the batteries up. Maybe they get louder or something. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening to another episode of the F Face Podcast. This was episode 160 of Volume 2 of Season 98. Please don't forget, <laughs> it is the summer of 98. We don't know what that means, but we are embracing it. <laughs> Additionally, RTX is coming. That's also a summer thing. And we want you to come out and enjoy it with us here in Austin, Texas, July 7th through the 9th. That includes the 8th. It's not the 7th, comma, 9th. That would be weird. You take the 8th off to, to rest, I guess, from the party on the 7th. No, we're going to do all three days. Uh, and if you come, you can check out the F Face Museum of Oddities and Things That Are Things. We think that you will like it. There's even one very, 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 very special item that we you've got to see it to believe. Uh, speaking of seeing stuff, I'd like to see you guys give some rates and reviews uh, on the podcast apps. I don't know what your, your, your preference is, but I know that it has an option for you to rate a Rate a podcast to let them know how much you like it. It, uh, it helps us, believe it or not. And then also, uh, people like words, so reviews are also uh, appreciated. And that'll do it for this episode of... Oh, no. Face. I didn't... I didn't hit record. You're a liar. You're a liar. I didn't hit, I didn't hit record. You're absolutely lying. You're lying, right? Blindside? <laughs> <laughs> you little prick. Find out! <laughs> Check out the show! <laughs> no! uh, and stop. Hey guys, Major League fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of F Face. We're Ericless. What does Meat Man look like? Gavin gets yet another nickname. The package is on the way. Did Eric meet Stuart? What's the best video game cake? And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of F Face. <laughs>